Welcome back to the series of videos from The Effect. Now we finally have come to it. We've come to the video where I admit that the title of the book, The Effect, is a lie. Uh, so because all this time we've been talking about identifying the causal effect of something on something else. What is the effect of X on Y? That's what all of this book has been about. However, what does the causal effect or the effect mean, actually? In fact, that's kind of a silly thing. There is no such thing as the effect. In fact, the effects vary. There are different effects for um, the same treatment on the same outcome, given the different context or time or who you're talking about, all this sort of stuff. So to, to, we'll tell you what I mean. I'll give you a very basic example. Let's try to say we're looking at a drug that reduces the rate of cervical cancer. Right? So it is a preventative drug against cervical cancer and uh, makes you less likely to get it. All right, so let's say that uh, this drug, um, uh, it reduces your chances of getting cervical cancer by on average 1%. But what does that mean? Because uh, that can't be true. I mean, I, for example, don't have a cervix, so it can't possibly do anything for me. So it can't possibly actually have an effect of reducing my rate of cervical cancer by 1% because my rate of cervical cancer was and would continue to be after the drug 0%. Can't happen, right? So there's not really a single effect of this drug. It at least has one effect for people who have a cervix to have cervical cancer in and a different effect for people who don't have a cervix at all. Um, but it can actually go even further than that. Like, why would there only be one particular effect on everybody who has a cervix? Like, maybe for some people, they, maybe because they're older or younger or different uh, races or different uh, backgrounds or different levels of risk towards cervical cancer, maybe one person, it reduces their chances by nothing, and one person, it reduces their chances by 1%, and one person, it reduces their chances by half a percent, another person, 2%, and so on. Uh, every individual person has a different causal effect. Uh, this is one of the things that makes social science and causal inference so difficult, uh, perhaps more difficult than it is in the physical sciences, because, you know, we are chasing all these different effects. There, every, every different treatment has a different effect for every different person. Uh-oh. This is what's called heterogeneous treatment effects. When a, diff when a treatment has different effects for different people, uh, that is a heterogeneous treatment effect. It is different among the different people. Uh, and this is true pretty much everywhere. Every time, every effect, there's at least a little bit of heterogeneity in the effect. Now, sometimes we can ignore it, you know, if we think that maybe it's not that different across different people. But sometimes we want to think about what exactly it means that we have this heterogeneity. And there are two things that we can really do about this heterogeneity. One of the things that we can try to do is try to estimate the full extent of the heterogeneity. I know that because the, the, that pill for cervical cancer will have no effect on me, and maybe it'll have 1% effect for this person, and 2% for this person, and half a percent for this person, and I can try to estimate all those values for each individual person. I can try to figure out who the 1% and who the 2% and who the half percents and who the 0% are, and describe that full distribution of the effect. And that would let me say something like, here is this, effect, this pill's effect for you. If you've ever heard of like personalized medicine, that's the kind of thing that they are trying to do with that trying to get a particular causal effect for a particular person. Now, that is great, and we will talk a little bit about different ways that we can do that, uh, but it's gonna wait a minute. We're not gonna really do a lot of those methods until we get way further into, into the videos with chapter 21. Um, but uh, also we can think about, well, okay, maybe we're not gonna actually try to estimate each individual person's effect. We're just gonna estimate a single value, but then we have to figure out, well, what does that value actually represent? Like, for example, if I said that the cervical cancer's average effect was, uh, or the effect that I estimate was 1%, what does that mean? Is that 1% if I average out everybody's effects? Well, if that's true, then that's probably understating how well the drug can really do, because it's including all the me's for which the effect is zero, but you'd never give me that pill anyway, so who cares that my effect is zero? Um, or would we say, you know, it's just the effect among people with a cervix? Well, even then, okay, well, is averaging out the effect for everybody with a cervix the thing that we want to do? Perhaps. In any case, we know that if we do some sort of statistical calculation that will give us a single effect, then we really want to know what it is that that represents. Is it the overall effect for everybody? In which case, we might be a little bit more impressed by 1% because it's, in, it's being weighed down by all the zeros. Uh, or is it just the effect for the people who it's actually going to have an effect on? Thinking through who we are getting the effect for is going to be really imp important in terms of how we use the effect that we get. Now, the thing to keep in mind when we are doing this approach where we get a single estimate of the treatment effect uh, and then we try to interpret what that means is that we are getting uh, averages of individual people's effects. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that I mean, I'm affected 0% by this pill, this person's affected 2%, this person's affected 1%, this person is affected half a percent. 
uh, in general, if we get a single value, it is going to take those true effects that we have for all those people, and it's going to average them together in some way. So a lot of these different effects we're going to talk about are average effects of some sort. Maybe they average out the effect over every, over all the individual effects, uh, which in case I would be weighing down my mind, my zero percent. Uh, maybe it averages things out over just a particular group of people. Maybe it's a, a some sort of weighted average. And that's what we're really trying to do. We want to know what kind of average are we getting? Who are we getting the average effect for? Now, the kind of average effect that you might have heard of before is the average treatment effect. And it's the most simple and straightforward. And it is simply, what is the average effect among everybody? If we gave this treatment to everybody, what would the average effect on people be? Now, of course, this is leaving out that heterogeneity in the treatment effect. We're just getting one value. But still, knowing the average effect among everybody could be a very handy thing to know. Now you'll often hear people talk about the average treatment effect as being the kind of average effect that you want to get, like that's the best one. That's not always true. It depends how you're planning to use that result. So in the cervical uh, cancer drug example, uh, the result that I gave, uh, you wouldn't really want the average treatment effect because that would include a lot of people who you're pretty sure you're not going to give the pill to anyway. You would want the average effect just among people who have the ability to have cervical cancer, right? Um, and yet it's a valuable one to think about. And we can also think about what kinds of designs are going to give us an average treatment effect. And throughout the next couple of videos, I'm going to give you a few rules of thumb, the kinds of designs that tend to lead to different kinds of treatment effect averages. Now, I want to be clear, the, the design is not destiny here. Uh, for any given analysis or given research design that you have, there's usually some different kinds of estimators that can give you different kinds of treatment effect averages. But in general, rules of thumb. Uh, the rule of thumb for average treatment effects is if you have some sort of representative sample and you have full randomization of your treatment in that sample, some sort of randomized controlled trial, for example, then that will give you an average treatment effect. You can plausibly say that you've got some randomization and the group that you've got randomization in is, is representative of the group that you want to generalize to. That is an average treatment effect. You're getting the average effect among that wider group, which makes the average treatment effect kind of difficult to come across, at least and it's uh, without doing some sort of fancy estimator that is designed to get it. Because you're not really gonna get it unless you have randomization in a representative group, which is hard to do. Even if you're running a randomized control trial, if that randomized control trial is of a selected group, uh, then that will not be giving you the average treatment effect overall. This is something we get in a lot of randomized experiments. Uh, so for example, in psychology, they do, they've do they done a lot of experiments uh, that are trying to get at something about human psychology generally, but then they recruit only college students into their randomized experiment. So it's a randomized experiment, uh, but we are only randomized within that particular group. And so that, because that is not a representative group of everybody, uh, we will not necessarily be getting the average treatment effect among the human population. So that's where we're starting off. We have this idea that each individual person has their own treatment effect. It's not just one universal thing. Uh, then we can think about what exactly we want to do with that. Uh, for some methods, you can attempt to get an individualized treatment effect for everybody. It's gonna take us a while to get to those methods, but I'll eventually talk about some of them. Uh, but also more generally, if we get something that just estimates a single effect, uh, we can ask ourselves, what does that estimate actually represent? And you really should be asking this question because it affects what you can really do with your causal estimate. So that's where we are. We have this idea of heterogeneous treatment effects. Each individual person or individual in your sample or out of your sample uh, is would, would be affected by the treatment in their own way. And we can't observe this on an individual level, right? Because we can't observe somebody both getting and not getting treatment. Uh, so, you know, in my case, my tr my individual true treatment effect of that cervical cancer drug is zero. I would have 0% chance of cervical cancer with or without the drug. This person over here, maybe they go from a 5% chance to a 3% chance. So their chances have dropped by 2%. Their individual treatment effect is negative two percentage points. Uh, this person down here, uh, they go from, I don't know, 0.8% to a 0.3%. So their chances are reduced by a half a percentage point. So their individual treatment effect is half a percentage point. It'd be really difficult to estimate that uh, directly because I cannot observe them in both cases. Um, but I can say, well, I know that this particular method that I'm using gives us perhaps an average treatment effect, which averages out my effect with this person's effect with this person's effect, and I get an overall average, even if I can't observe any individual person's effect. As a rule of thumb, we can think about when we are likely to get an average treatment effect. It tends to come from designs where we have fully randomized uh, treatment uh, or some source of random variation in treatment. And when we just isolate that source of random variation, either from an experiment or something like that, we are looking at a group of people who are randomized in and out of treatment. And that group of people is representative of the wider population. 
Uh, if you have that, then you have an average treatment effect out of the gate. Uh, there are some special estimators that will let you get average treatment effects from other kinds of designs, but that's where we can start off with it as a rule of thumb number one. Uh, we'll talk about different kinds of treatment effect averages in the next couple of videos. Thank you. Thank you.